Hey guys, Sherry from The Watering Mouth here, and I have a really fun video, 10 ways to flavor soup without salt. So as Nutritarians, following the Eat to Live Diet by Dr. Joel Furman, if you haven't read the book yet, make sure you do. It will change your life. This is all about promoting your health, living your longest, most vibrant, amazing life with really healthy, super, super healthy foods. And when we eat this way, we tend to eat a lot of soups, actually. If you've been in the Eat to Live game for a while, you probably are no stranger to soups. I know I make soups every single week and I eat them almost every single day. They're a really great meal for keeping you full and satisfied and you can get a lot of really great nutritarian foods in just one uh, dish. So. The problem is, when you start the Eat to Live diet, things tend to taste pretty bland. And soup especially, because when you cook down vegetables and you don't add the massive amount of sodium that typical soups do that you find in restaurants or on the grocery store shelf, it can taste bland. Over time, your taste buds will change. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end but you really do want to be able to have some really good techniques in your arsenal in order to love that soup after you've slaved over it for, you know, half an hour or so. <laughs> also, this video was a little bit special because I am going to have a free PDF available for you with all of the different ways that you can flavor soup here. Um, so you can sign up right here to get that PDF. Uh, that way you can just tack it right onto your fridge and whenever you make soup, you can use different ways of flavoring those soups. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like videos like this. I make a video like this every week. I am an eat to live coach and I would love to be part of your journey. Okay, let's get into it. So 10 ways to flavor soup without salt. Number one is that you should use a liquid base that's made from vegetables, not water. I've made this mistake many times where I made a soup with a base of water thinking it was gonna taste great. And when I went to go taste it after it was all cooked, I was like, hmm, yeah. <laughs> crap, I made a whole pot of this, what am I gonna do? So I got in the habit of flavoring soups after I was done making them. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end. But you can take a lot of work off yourself if you just use veggie juice uh, for the base of your soup. So you can use some vegetable broth, low sodium or no sodium vegetable broth. There's some great ones at the store. Or you can make your own vegetable broth from veggie scraps that you save throughout the week, which is something that I've been doing just recently. But you can just get it store-bought. So use a combination of vegetable broth and then vegetable juices. So the three ones that you wanna look out for are carrot juice, tomato juice, and celery juice. These are the three like most flavorful bases to use for soups. Why? Because they're actually very high sodium foods, I was surprised to learn. But I noticed after a few years of doing Eat to Live, and using vegetable broth and water for soup bases. And then I one day was like, oh, I'll just try to do this carrot juice thing because, uh, you know, Dr. Furman is always telling you to use carrot juice as your base. So I decided to try it, to give it another go. Put some store bought carrot juice as my base, made the whole soup, didn't add any salt or anything. I took a bite of it and I was like, wait a minute, this is salty. And I was like, what did I put in here? What did, you know, cause I'm always just like throwing things in, all like mad scientists throwing stuff into my soup. And then I was like, the only thing that could possibly have salt would be this carrot juice. So I went to go check the label and sure enough, high sodium food. I was like, oh my gosh, did they add salt to this? No, turns out carrots are just a very high sodium food like celery and tomatoes, but naturally occurring sodium. So you don't have to worry about this. So if you use juice for your base, that's gonna give you a lot of flavor, some really good natural really occurring sodium. And the two combinations that Dr. Furman talks about as being really, really yummy for soup bases are carrot plus celery and celery plus tomato. So check those out. I think you'll really like it. The number two way to flavor soup without salt is by juicing your own vegetables. Okay, so this is kind of like an extension of number one, but I wanna make a point about it because I started to actually juice my own. I have this really, really nice um, juicer that I've had for forever. I just never really get it out because it's kind of this one of these bulky appliances that you don't end up using. But then one day I was like, you know what? I'm gonna juice my own because I had been buying carrot juice and I was like, I have a ton of carrots in the fridge why don't I just try this juicer again you guys I did about 10 carrots 10 large carrots which made two cups of juice use that as my base off the wall out of the park delicious I was like oh my god this is even so much better than the um, glass jar that I had bought the other day of carrot juice so 
the last time I made soup. I couldn't believe it, you guys. So juicing your own vegetables, whether it's you know celery, carrots, tomatoes, whatever it is, or you can use like the stewed tomatoes or you know things that you can get in a BPA-free can or whatever for tomato stuff. But then if you're gonna do juice, actually do your own juice of celery and carrot. You will not be disappointed if you can get a juicer that's good enough. So the juicer that I have is a Hiram. It's a masticating juicer, which just means it's it's very similar to actual like human chewing where it just kind of grinds the food to a pulp literally and squeezes out all that juice. It's really efficient at getting the juice out. I'm gonna put a link for that down below in case you're interested. It's quite um, it's quite an investment, but you might find one as well while you're looking around that is gonna uh, be a little bit easier on the budget. But this is the one I love, so if you're interested, check this out. Okay, the number three way to flavor your soup without salt, is basically that you're gonna take leeks, onions, and zucchini, or like a combination of the three, and you're gonna water saute those for a little bit, or you're going to saute them in your vegetable base, whether it's like veggie broth or carrot juice or whatever, just saute them for a minute, cook them down a bit, and then you're gonna blend those with a little bit of the veggie base. Um, so that's gonna give you a good, nice thickening agent, and it's also gonna add a lot more flavor to your soup. So that's a really, really cool way of creating some more flavor in the beginning of your soup. Okay, the number four way to flavor your soup without salt is you're gonna make it creamy. We have a, you know, a lot of um, attachment to this kind of creaminess, I think, uh, in the standard American diet. So we have a lot of cheese and sour cream and these dairy products that we're so attached to. And so it really does help make us feel a little bit better when our soup can be creamy. The way that you would do that in a nutritarian way is by using nuts. There's other products that you can use, but nuts are probably your best way of doing that creaminess because you get the really good um, sterols and stanols and phytochemicals and fiber and things that are found in the nuts. Whereas if you just used some processed type um, fake dairy product or tofu product, you're gonna end up getting just some processed food that's not gonna give you any good stuff. So use the nuts, use seeds. So my favorite way is to take my Vitamix blender, I'll put some cashews, some hemp seeds, some pine nuts, maybe about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup into the Vitamix. Then once the soup is done, I'll take some of that broth, pour it into the Vitamix, blend it together until it becomes a really nice, thick, creamy base, and just pour that right back into the soup. Once you stir that up, you're gonna have a nice, nice, creamy soup. Like, honestly rivaling anything you can have at a restaurant. Number five way to make soup taste awesome without salt, make it cheesy. Cheesy, what do we mean by cheesy? So I'm, I'm again, not talking about the processed uh, fake cheese products that are out there on the market. Even though those work, that's not what I'm talking about here. We're looking for natural foods. So we're gonna use nutritional yeast. Um, if you have not been introduced to the world of nutritional yeast as an eat to live nutritarian, you are sadly and sorely missing out. So you have to jump on the bandwagon. First of all, you should get unfortified nutritional yeast. That's important. I have a link for the one that I love to buy down below in the description. Get nutritional yeast, start using it. It's a weird product that you're like, oh my God, what is this in the beginning? It's a deactivated form of yeast. So it's not like the yeast that you use in bread or anything like that. It's a deactivated form. It has, um, if you smell it, it's got this really nice, it, it smells like bread, but it tastes cheesy. It's not like cheese, right? Like it's not exact, so don't be looking to have something that's exactly like cheese, but it's gonna give you that essence of cheese. It's gonna make it feel kind of cheesy. So also if you blended the cashews from the last step and then you add nutritional yeast, that's a really, really nice combo. It gives you kind of a creamy, cheesy feel uh, without having to actually use dairy products. Find a recipe that has some um, nutritional yeast in it. I'm gonna put a link for one or two down below that you can try out, ones that I really love that use these types of products and I promise you'll like them. And if you don't, just keep trying them. <laughs> Number six way that you can make soup taste flavorful without adding salt is by blending in dried fruit for like a sweet and sour flavor. I haven't actually tried this, but if you like sweet and sour um, soups already, this is a really good step for you. So think um, prunes, apricots, raisins. You can blend these into the soup just a little bit and get a really nice flavor there. I just don't have much more information on it because I've never done it myself, but if you have, let me know down below what your favorite way to do this is with and if you have a recipe to share too. Okay, number seven is one of my favorite ones. It is to use spices and herbs, fresh or dried. Keep in mind that more isn't necessarily better. So if you're using just a plain herb, oregano or basil, dill sometimes, like if you add a ton, it doesn't necessarily taste good. You want to have it so it's just sort of 
giving a little bit of flavor there. On the other hand, I find that spices like garlic, dried garlic, dried onion, um, onion powder, whatever, Mrs. Dash, or cumin usually. These uh, spices, that I find that you can kind of use them with abandon and I, you get really, really great flavor out of them. Uh, my favorite spices from Mrs. Dash, I like the tomato basil garlic flavor, I like the um, Southwest Chipotle flavor, and then there's an the extra spicy one too, that one's really good. And these spices, I just, man, I just put so much in the soup. I usually double or triple whatever Dr. Furman's recipes call for when it comes to spices, um, because you can use those unlimited and as long as it's not overpowering then you're good but typically I find that if you're using just one spice or one herb that I try to use those sparingly because um, you get a lot of overwhelm if you use too much also red pepper flakes and cayenne don't discount those too you don't want to use a ton but they really do give a nice dimension to um, the soup as well with giving some heat rather than just flavor and the other two I want to mention are veggie base is my absolute favorite um, it's a low sodium powdered vegetable stock basically. I've been using this this whole time. It's fantastic. Just don't use too much of course because it does have sodium in it. I'm going to put a link for that one down below but whenever I'm in a pinch and I don't have any veggie broth on hand I just use some of the veggie base put that in the water and um, you know mix it up. Other thing that adds amazing flavors we talked about in step one tomatoes sun-dried tomatoes. They add amazing, amazing flavor to soup. I will always um, sort of rehydrate them, chop them up, whatever, throw the whole thing into the soup, and you get some really, really fantastic flavor. And every time you get a little sun-dried tomato in a bite, it's like, ugh, heaven. So, so good. And they are very naturally salty, as we talked about before. So sun-dried tomatoes can be your friend. Very important, though, don't get sun-dried tomatoes with, like, the nitrates and, um, They'll often salt sun-dried tomatoes or yours oil to make them more pliable or whatever. Don't. I found a brand that's really, really amazing on Amazon. I always buy these. I'm going to put a link for those down below so you can check those out and get those delivered straight to your house because they're super, super good and I use them anytime I need sun-dried tomato flavor. One little caveat about this specific um, thing is that beware of spice mixes um, made by um, that are called like Spike or Benson's. Okay, beware of these. A lot of people think that these are like the miracle spices or the miracle flavorings, and it says right on the package, no MSG, no sodium, that kind of a thing. It makes it sound really, really good for you. But there's a tricky, tricky ingredient on the back of the label. It says nutritional yeast extract. Okay, I am not sure, and I should probably call the company to figure this out, but I think that this means actually just yeast extract. Now, I have a whole post on my website about yeast extract and uh, the, the tricky way that this particular ingredient is used to make people think that it's not salt, but it's really like, it's basically like using MSG. It's chemically almost identical. And so they use something called nutritional yeast extract because I think they're trying to make it sound like it's nutritional yeast, but it's actually yeast extract, which I feel like... I feel like it's a little bit trickety, tricky, 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 tricky in that marketing there to try and make you think that it's actually um, something healthy when it's actually closer to MSG. So I would stay away, steer clear from those things that include uh, those ingredients that are similar to yeast extract. If it's too good to be true, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, guys. <laughs> Just keep that in mind at all times, okay? You want to be using natural foods that you can find anywhere. You know, these veggie bases, it's made from actual, you know, ground up plants and things like that. These are the tricks that you want to be able to use uh, in your soups and not just something that seems really good. So oh, I'll just put some in, but I'll pretend like I don't look at the ingredient list, you know? Okay, moving on. Number eight way that you can flavor your soup without salt is to use really tasty veggies in your soup. Just as we talked about using these vegetables, these salty, high sodium veggies as a base, we also want to use those just as the crunch, as the natural texture in the soup as well, because that's going to give some super good texture of course but flavor mostly so using celery you know the um the mirepoix those veggies in the beginning onions um you know any kind of allium family garlic um and then also carrots and celery using these very flavorful aromatic green onions leeks these kinds of things uh, types of vegetables in the beginning when we're water sauteing will really bring out a bunch of flavor in the beginning and add that to the soup as we're cooking it in the beginning and then also to use flavorful ones 
just in the soup itself so some examples I really love to add a little bit of sweet potato now we don't eat a lot of sweet potato in the eat to live diet but having a little bit in a soup is fine you know some cubes of that using tomatoes by themselves like we talked about in step one and then peas and corn are a favorite way for me to flavor soups in the same way of course just like sweet potato or squash or these kinds of starchy vegetables peas and corn are also starchy vegetables as well so you want to make sure to use those in a sparing uh, type of way but they do if you have them just a little bit throughout the soup they give a nice like pop of flavor and you sort of chew down on them and they're also really economical and then there's an 8b to this which I want to say which is to use a higher ratio of vegetables to broth so if you have so you don't want to have one of these really um, liquidy kind of soups that's just got some veggies floating around in it because that's not going to taste very good if you're not using salt you actually want to have some nice hearty soups with beans and vegetables and all this really really good stuff and maybe some cashews and some nutritional yeast and you know maybe a little bit of grain here and there and you just take a bite and you're like oh that's hearty and that's really also going to contribute to your um, to your feeling of full and, and, and satisfied as well. So make sure you're really thinking about these things as you go. Number nine is to finish the soup. And this is my favorite technique. And I kind of came up with this one a little bit on my own um, over the years because it's just um, a product of the way that I cook. I suck at cooking. So I would basically just throw a bunch of things in a pot and hope that it tastes good at the end. And um, if it didn't, then I would finish the soup afterwards. So I would have, um, when I went to go eat the soup, I'd take a bowl, usually bowls of soup for me are about two cups. So I'd put that in the pot, start warming it up, and then I would start to add things and see if I could make it taste good, right? So the things that I love to finish my soups are are, first of all, number one is citrus. Lemon juice or lime juice, you guys, OMG. Always, always amazing. Um, almost any soup I've ever had, adding some lemon juice. Lemon is a, a natural, naturally salty, feeling fruit so when you you know you kind of get that bite on your tongue a little bit it feels a little bit like salt so use some lemon juice take one portion squeeze half a lemon or a quarter of a lemon into there mix that up you'll get some really good kind of salty flavor start there see how you like it if that's good leave it lemon plus curry uh, lemon plus um, cumin those two combinations awesome super super great with the addition of cashews blended in, you guys, now you've got three things that are amazing and it tastes so good. Then you add some nutritional yeast on top of that, you get a little cheesy flavor. And then on top of that, you add a little bit of mustard with just a little bit of sodium. Oh, now you're in love. And you guys, I'm like my mouth is watering right now just thinking about this because those combinations are like, my jam i eat that a lot especially if it's like a creamy cauliflower type based soup that's my favorite type of um combination you kind of kind of add whatever mix of those five things that's my favorite you guys it's just an idea you can also add some vinegar and i don't do that very often because my husband doesn't like vinegar but it's a really really good way to flavor the soup and get some nice saltiness as well okay <sighs> You all have been so patient for getting through this list because right now we are on the number 10 way to flavor your soup without salt. And that is not to actually flavor the soup at all, but to eat the soup in a different way. I do this a lot when I'm just bored with my soup or whatever. So you can put your soup, especially if it's one of those creamy hearty soups like you were talking about, just take a big pile of lettuce, whether it's like romaine, arugula, whatever, and just throw your soup right on top of that. Um, and then you can sort of eat that with the salad and you've got a really cool way of eating soup and it will really change that up for you. And you can get the sodium as well from the naturally occurring from the lettuce as well, which is helpful. You can also, one thing I really like to do is if I make a big bowl of steamed veggies at night, I'll dip the veggies into the soup and I'll use the soup as a dip for the veggies. That really elevates both dishes the soup and the steamed veggies so you could try that one and the other thing is really if you're struggling struggling especially if you're starting out with this lifestyle and you're struggling with this whole no sodium tastes really bland thing one thing i used to always do in the beginning is i would have a salad and a soup and i would alternate bites so i'd go soup salad soup salad soup salad and that would really give my taste buds a change for between every single bite and that would help if I had two very bland things switching back and forth really uh, really tricked my taste buds into liking what I was eating Whew, everyone take a deep breath relax I'm gonna give you my parting thoughts here so if you're just starting out as a nutritarian don't give up 
keep going. Even if you think something is bland, keep going, keep trying things, try these different techniques. Just don't add salt, okay? Salt is really bad for us. We know that the literature, the, the research is clear that salt is bad for us, so we don't wanna eat it. So just grit your teeth and get through this. Use these techniques, get through it, um, because your taste buds will adjust. And that's, that's the thing to keep in mind. After you've been on this diet for a few weeks, your taste buds adjust, you start to love the flavor of this stuff, and you can really pick out flavors that you didn't know before. But use these techniques, get through it, and wait, wait it out. Just get through that few weeks. Your taste buds will get better, I promise you. And another technique is put it in the freezer, come back to it in a week or two, or in a few weeks even, or a couple months. Once you've been at this diet for a little bit longer and your taste buds have adjusted you may end up loving that soup next time or you may end up learning a new way to flavor that soup that you didn't think of before or just add something to it that you didn't think of before as you sort of learn new techniques you can come back to it and uh, and also they say you know it takes it can take like 15 to 20 times for you to like a new food that's a lot of times you guys so if you have some stuff that you've made from the past that you didn't really love you pull it out of the freezer you might like it this time and another tip is do not expect it to taste like what you you're used to soups tasting like because you are not used to soups tasting like beans or quinoa or veggies or meat or anything like that you're not used to that you are used to soups tasting like salt that's what you're used to so don't expect nutritarian soups to taste that way get used to a new way of eating and a new way that foods will taste because healthy foods have their own amazing flavors each one has its own amazing flavor the more you try it the more you'll love it you will begin to appreciate these flavors over time i promise you stick with it, just keep going. Make sure to pick up the free PDF that comes along with this video. So I'm gonna, I have all this stuff into a PDF for you that you can just tack right up on your refrigerator. So every time you make a soup, you can use this and keep all this stuff in mind as a little cheat sheet. Please subscribe and comment. Let's have a discussion about this. Do you have any other ways that you flavor soup uh, that I haven't mentioned here? Sorry this video was so long. Sorry I talked so much. Please support me on Patreon. Check that out. It's a place where you can get some uh, exclusive content that no one else sees. And at the same time, you'll be supporting me and helping me make more videos for you like this. As always, thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate you. I hope you have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye. Wow. That was a long video. <laughs>